Hello everyone. I'm going to be telling you about safe variable stars today and how you can use them to um, estimate distances in the universe, okay? Um, in the last slide, I will give you a summary of all the distances that we've mentioned already. So that's the last one on estimating distances. And um, then you can go on the other videos to see the other ways of measuring distances in the universe in case you missed those videos, okay? Um, on this slide, I also have a couple of videos. I will put them all in the description. They are obviously not my videos. And they are either to tell you what the safe variable stars are or a video where it gives you a little bit more detail on how you can use them to estimate distances, okay? So it's a little bit more visual to what, than what I have in here. So safe variable stars, they are a class of stars, okay? They tend to be grouped in different uh, groups together. And uh, the stars within each group, they are relatively close to each other. So we can do the approximation to assume that um, they are uh, at the same distance from each other, okay? If I have another group of safe variable stars, then that's a different issue. But within the group, I'll say that they are all in the same distance because, you know, for the size of the universe, it's not really going to make a big difference for me to say that some stars that are not that close together are going to be close together, okay? And they are very special stars because they vary their brightness in a regular interval of time. And uh, the reason just for, to vary their brightness is already something that is a little bit special because it's not because the star is dying that suddenly varies the brightness, but it's that they do it in a very specific interval of time and they keep doing that over the same period of time, okay? So that's quite interesting. We don't quite know why the brightness changes, but we believe that it's because the star expands and contracts. So if you look at the graph here, this graph in there, so you can see the graph, uh, the graph, the star being smaller and bigger, right? And you can see that when the star is smaller, the luminosity is not as high. As the star uh, expands, the luminosity increases. As the star contracts, the luminosity decreases, and so on. The whole cycle repeats itself. And as I told you, this cycle keeps repeating itself in the same interval of time, okay? So the good thing about the uh, safety variables, oh, and by the way, in this picture, which is not mine, um, I have here the example of safety variables. So you can see them brighter and then dimmer, and then brighter again and then dimmer, okay? So uh, the good thing about safe variables is they are easy to detect and then we can just simply look at them and look at how long it takes for their brightness to be the same as we initially saw. So to get to know the period to which they change their brightnesses, okay? And uh, funnily enough, there is a relationship in between the period that they take to vary their brightness and the star's intrinsic luminosity, so their real, real luminosity, okay? So as you can see here from this graph, they kind of make this uh, linear relationship where the longer the period in days, the brighter the stars are, okay, in terms of luminosity. So in these luminosities come in uh, luminosities of the sun. So I can go up to 30,000 times the, the, the luminous of the sun or as luminous as the sun when I have a period of about 100 days, okay? So the brightest safe variables vary with the longest periods, and because the stars are roughly the same distance, uh, the stars that appear brighter are also the ones with the greater luminosity, okay? And the luminosity of a safe variable star is related to the periods. So what I can do is I can simply um, see a star or an object close to a safe variable that I don't quite know what the distance is, or looking at this safe variable, all I need to do is look at their periods, okay? Se check the period of variation. From the graph, I can determine the luminosity that that uh, safe variable is, um, is supposed to have. And then going on the HR diagram, and again, I have a video on the HR diagram if you want to go and uh, check. Uh, going on the HR diagram, I can figure out the star's absolute magnitude. And then using that formula that relates the absolute magnitude with apparent magnitudes, absolute equals apparent minus 5 plus 5 logarithm of d, something alike, again, go on the previous video, I can figure out what is the distance in parsecs of those stars, okay? So phase safe methods are actually really good to measure distances, okay? Um, so in summary, 
to estimate distances within the universe, and remember they all have a certain uncertainty, you can use for small distances radar, for nearby stars you can use parallax, for larger distances I can use my parallax angles anymore because the stars don't seem to move um, according to the background. I cannot use radar anymore because you know I cannot send a pulse of radio waves up to the object. So I need to use standard candles. I need to use apparent brightnesses. So examples of standard candles are safe at variables where I know or I can know what is the absolute magnitude. I only need to compare it with the apparent one. I can use type 1a supernova, which I believe it was my last video on astrophysics, so give it a go and check it, which is, uh, again, they always have the same absolute magnitude because they are always created once the star that is accreting mass gets to 1.44 uh, solar masses, so the uh, center shaker limit. Or I can use the star luminosities by looking at the spectrum. I can get to know the type of star. By getting to know the type of star, I can get to know the absolute magnitude. I can compare with the apparent magnitude. So all of these are ways that I can estimate distances. And again, this is the part in astrophysics where we have the most uncertainty because we can only estimate them. We do not know the real distances. And if you remember from my last video, the universe is expanding. So even when we are estimating these distances, we may get them a little bit off because the universe is expanding and whatever we believe the factor of expansion was before, we now know the universe is expanding at a faster rate, okay? Anyway, I hope this helped. Uh, that's all for safe variables, and that's really all for how you estimate distances. So I have a video on radar, I have a video on parallax, I have a video on type 1a supernova, I have a new video about star spectra and the HR diagram, so you will be able to see how you measure all these distances with all these methods, I mean. Um, so I hope it helps, and see you in the next video. Bye!